we're not just here with Elena to present more statistics on the gender gap in science. Uh, we're here to trigger a gender data revolution. We're here to show you how technology, how open data and APIs can empower you to measure the gender gap anywhere you want, in your company, in your city, in a country, in your industry. Uh, a word about myself, I'm Elion and I built a startup called Namzor about names. This software recognizes Irish names, French names, Chinese names, Indian names from Andhra Pradesh, and one application is also to recognize the gender in names. Um, about a year ago, uh, we met with Elena at the OECD, and she had the idea of applying this software for um, triggering this gender data revolution. Uh, so I'm Elena Rossini. I am a filmmaker by trade, um, and I'm also a photographer and a multimedia producer. Uh, if you look at my Twitter bio, I call myself a real life Lisa Simpson, because I'm just like the character. I've always been very idealistic, um, bookish, vegetarian, and interested in social justice issues. Um, be the change you want to see in the world has been my motto since I was a child. And uh, every single project that I picked um, has always been in response to a frustration that I had, um, especially when it comes to gender inequality. So um, I have this film that's about um, how advertisers make all of us insecure about the way that we look. I also have a project called No Country for Young Women. Uh, that's a platform with about 120 interviews of women across generations and professional fields um, talking about their lives. Um, and when I met Elian, I thought that it would be great to combine our expertise and uh, to do a project together. So combining, um, again, my passion for um, filmmaking and using filmmaking towards social good and his engineering and entrepreneurship background. Um, so the slide that you see behind me, uh, it's from a conference that I was invited to in March. Um, and it was from the No Ceilings Foundation. Uh, the women that you see in the photo are Hillary Clinton, Chelsea, and Melinda Gates. And I love the fact that I've noticed a tipping point in our culture right now. Um, there has been this like, really effort from the world of technology, business, and politics to address gender inequality. And one of my favorite sentences from Hillary Clinton has been that data not only measures progress, but it inspires it, it inspires progress. And this is exactly what Elion and I have set out to do with Gender Gap Greater. So, um, so our mission is to support the gender data revolution, which is an hashtag that the UN Foundation came up with. Um, and it basically means that we would love to empower companies, nonprofits, and individuals to measure the gender gap using this API that we came up with, um, and really harnessing the power of big data or open data. And maybe Elian is going to explain. Yes. What, what you saw in the previous slides is uh, the complexity of uh, societies of names around the world. Of course, Indian names are very complex, uh, so are African names, and even in, let's say, Irish, French, Italian names, Jean Durieu is male, Jean Parker is female, uh, Andrea Rossini is male, whereas Andrea Weston is more likely female. And we've created an API to make analyzing names very simple. You enter a name and you get probabilistic uh, information about the gender. It's something anyone can use, and we've opened it completely uh, for, for the, the community. Uh, with a business model that also allows a, a, a commercial version for organizations that are uh, designed to, to work on gender issues like universities and international organizations uh, and so on. Um, so what we did, so we're using this API uh, that's done through Namzor, which is Elian's company, and then we have Gender Gap Grader, which is a publishing platform where we conduct studies regularly and we essentially look at the gender gap in a different field uh, for every study. 
Uh, but something that we have felt very strongly about is not only to point out the problem, uh, because we've definitely found a gender gap in every field that we looked at, but we also want to talk about solutions and really have a positive spin on this. So on the website, every time that we publish a study, um, we usually ask really influential people in each field to comment on the study and also to provide solutions. So can, we can really like ignite a conversation of what can be done going forward to improve the situation. And the very first study that we did was about the gender gap in filmmaking. Uh, when Elion and I met a year ago, I was just about ready to go to the Cannes Film Festival. Um, I've been going there regularly as a filmmaker. And I don't know how many stories I could tell you um, about personal um, you know, discrimination. And um, whenever I go to pitch meetings, I'm often asked uh, if they can help me find a filmmaker or a director for my projects, because apparently I don't look like a film director. Um, so I was really passionate about looking at um, statistics about IMDb, which is the largest archive, essentially, of every single person that has worked in cinema, from the early days of cinema to today, across the world. And so we did um, this study, um, downloading five million names, and we have found that across virtually every single category, uh, we would see about 80% male versus 20% female from film directors, screenwriters, producers. And you might be wondering, why should we care, should we care about this issue? Well, I think that for filmmaking in particular, um, you know, films, TV shows, they create an image of the world that then becomes normalized in a way. So if we go to the cinema and we see movies that are directed, written, and produced by men, where women have very few roles, like the wife or the love interest, um, then it's definitely going to affect us about you know, our ideas about what is possible in our lives. So I think it's very important to point out that you know, the gender gap in filmmaking is something that should be addressed and should be addressed urgently. Um, this, actually, this study um, was really successful, so when we published it, um, it was picked up by IndieWire, which is uh, one of the most prominent blogs when it comes to film, and it generated like a lot of really interesting discussions, so we were very happy about that. And it motivated us to carry on and to focus on other fields. Yes, yeah, so after that, we looked at uh, the gender gap in aviation. Uh, looking at uh, 650,000 airline pilots. And after that, uh, we looked at the global uh, startup ecosystem, uh, analyzing a database called Angelist uh, that has uh, about also uh, 650,000 profiles from VC, business angels, and entrepreneurs, as well as startup professionals. And we prepared this uh, data visualization of the uh, gender gap in, uh, in VC and business angels. Um, now, the, f the figures you're going to see today about the gender gap in science are completely new, and they are based on two databases, ORCID, which is the future reference database for scientists' names, so that they can cite each other without any issue with uh, homonyms and so on, and highly cited which reflects the brightest mind in science uh, from uh, most cited scientists uh, from uh, large databases. And the main results. Yes, so we've actually found that out of one million names, about 30% of those scientists were women um, globally. Uh, but we also went into uh, you know, more detailed um, results, um, and so like we found that there's been a significant improvement in many fields, as you can see in the infographic, and you can read more about that uh, on our website. And I think that for virtually every single field, uh, it went from being in the single digits to improving to being you know, around like 14% in a lot of them, uh, except for physics. So surprisingly, the numbers in physics went down. Um, and we interviewed some prominent scientists and uh, researchers 
just to get their comments about what they thought. And they were also positively surprised. Um, but at the same time, it's like, can you really get excited if it goes from like 3% to 14%? Mm. I think that there's still like a lot of work that could mm. be done. And some of the people who actually do this work uh, are men. Uh, for example, uh, Cédric Villani uh, is a mathematician, Meadow Fields 2012, and he's very um, active in uh, promoting uh, mathematics for young people, uh, pupils, but women also. And the good news of uh, uh, last year's uh, field medal. Yeah, is that an Iranian woman was the first recipient ever of the field medal, uh, Maria Mirzahani. And uh, it was, again, absolutely thrilling because it's a domain that was dominated by men. And so, like, for the first time, we had a woman winner. Um, and she was already cited um, yesterday. So, we're very excited right. about that. So, the mathematics of names can be used to also uh, trigger this social change. Um, you can uh, look at uh, those uh, studies on the website. And more importantly, you can use the API. You can look at open data. And you can measure the gender gap wherever you want. So everything that we've done here is something you can do where it matters to you. Thank you very much. Thanks.